look and see how the patient is breathing. If you can see them using what we call accessory muscles, that is the muscles that go from the clavicle up to behind the ears, pulling their chest up, desperately trying to pull air in, then we know there is partially obstructed airway. So we've looked, we've listened, then the next thing is we feel. Can we feel air entry into the chest? Is the chest rising and falling? The first thing that we need to do when we approach an unconscious patient whose airway is obstructed is to tilt the head gently back in an attempt to get the tongue off the back of the throat and that's most likely what is causing the airway obstruction. Now, if this is someone who hasn't fallen from a height or had a head injury, that is somebody that I think is unlikely to have um, damage to the cervical spine. The easiest, simplest way to do it is to do a head tilt chin lift. One hand on the patient's forehead, fingers on the jaw. Be very careful when you're doing this not to put your fingers round the patient's throat. Fingers just on the jaw and then you just want to tilt the head very slightly. It's a fairly gentle movement. You don't want to be going as far as this. So head tilt, chin lift. If however this is somebody who's fallen from a height, who's got a, an injury to the head, anything that makes me think that there could be damage to the spine, I don't want to take the risk of making that movement because that could well further damage the spine. So the other way to get the same effect is to do what's termed a jaw thrust. You put your fingers on the patient's cheeks and your fingers here just and on the angle of the jaw. So that's just in front of the earlobe. And you just push forward and up. You get exactly the same effect as the head tilt chin lift, but you have actually not moved the patient's neck back to any degree at all. Okay, so we've done our head tilt chin lift or our jaw thrust whatever is most appropriate. The next thing is to have a look and see is there any fluid or other foreign object bodies inside the mouth. For fluid, like blood or vomitus, the thing to do is to use a simple handheld suction device such as this. It should have a hard catheter on the end of it called a yanker. Have the patient's head still tilted as described and then pop the yanker device to the back of the throat and suck as you take it out. So you suck on pulling it back out. Don't use this for more than 15 seconds because you do deprive the patient of oxygen whilst you're using it. So, for blood or vomit, maximum of 15 seconds, and you suck on the way out, not on the way in. For foreign bodies, solids, that you can clearly see when you look in the mouth. We can remove these using McGill's forceps. These are actually um, shaped so that it's relatively easy to remove things from the sides of the mouth. So again, just with the head tilt chin lift, just pop the McGill in and remove it. Remember, it's only for things you can directly see. Don't go blindly in thinking there might be something.